I'm a Hikmet Hajiyev. I am a head of the foreign policy department at the presidential administration of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan's foreign policy, first of all, based on the key fundamental principles. And Azerbaijan's foreign policy approach, we have in a security consciousness or security based on foreign policy. In a sense, our foreign policy should also serve Azerbaijan's security, strengthening its independence, and also providing its territorial integrity. And Azerbaijan foreign policy also based on the principles of the norms and uh, principles of international law and also Charter of the United Nations. And in our foreign policy approach, we always guided by the predictability, transparency and openness. And we also appreciate uh, effective uh, partnership and cooperation with the partnering countries. And now transforming it into the uh, priorities of Azerbaijan foreign policy, first priority we should highlight Azerbaijan's uh, restoring Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and sovereignty within its internationally recognized borders as a fundamental principle for Azerbaijan. Because Azerbaijan is suffering more than 25 years occupation of its territories and more than 1 million Azerbaijanis are become uh, refugees and IDPs as a result of this occupation. So that through the negotiation process, resolving of this conflict and providing Azerbaijan's territorial integrity is must. And second key priority for Azerbaijan, it's in a development of cooperation or bilateral cooperation uh, with the neighboring and regional countries. And uh, development of uh, cooperation with the neighboring countries is also one of the uh, you know, priorities for all countries, and including for Azerbaijan. And in that domain, I can proudly say that Azerbaijan has managed to build mutually beneficial co cooperation and partnership, including at the level of strategic partnership with all its neighbors, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Georgia, which are the land borders of Azerbaijan, but Azerbaijan have an excellent relations. Unfortunately, because of the conflict with Armenia, we don't have any uh, cooperation and relations with Armenia, but we do hope that after the resolution of the conflict, we do can come to that point as well. A third line in Azerbaijan's foreign policy uh, is the cooperation or bilateral cooperation with the wider international community and all uh, major powers of the world. Because uh, when Azerbaijan was elected United Nations Security Council on non-permanent seats, 155 countries supported Azerbaijan. It shows that the level of the development of Azerbaijan's bilateral cooperation with the international community. And we do also believe that bilateral cooperation is not exclusive, it's an inclusive concept. And therefore, uh, developing of Azerbaijan cooperation with the European Union and individual EU countries, with the United States, after the Brexit with the Great Britain, which is a uh, United Kingdom, is an important partner of Azerbaijan, and also China, Japan, South Korea, and also through the regional prism with African countries and Latin American countries are the important priorities for Azerbaijan. We also see it in the multilateral platforms as well. Azerbaijan, we see an assumed chairmanship of non-aligned movement. Azerbaijan, a couple of uh, days ago, hosted summit of the non-aligned uh, non movement after UN General Assembly is one of the biggest gathering. And it shows that there is a confidence, respect by international community to Azerbaijan that Azerbaijan rendered uh, with a chairmanship position. And then multilateral diplomacy. Because uh, we do believe, uh, being a, a geographically small country, we do believe there are multilateral diplomacy. And so multilateral diplomacy, we do also believe that we can find a solution to the common problems of the, uh, related to the international peace, security, and sustainable development as well. Therefore, Azerbaijan actively engaged with international and regional institutions. Then in Azerbaijan's foreign policy agenda, we have transport, energy, and economic development. These are also three major dimensions of Azerbaijan's foreign policy that are also served to create connectivity including the energy connectivity in our region with our partners and friends and also serving for the benefit of the entire region. Of course, and it continues Azerbaijan foreign policy priorities, including the humanitarian agenda, sport diplomacy, because Azerbaijan is a regular host of the important sport activities, and we do believe this cultural and also civilizational dialogue is also one of the priorities of Azerbaijan. We call it the Baku process, but Azerbaijan brings together OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and Council of Europe member countries, and enforces and uh, promotes dialogue among different civilizations and cultures based on Azerbaijan's own uh, values and traditions. Immediate national security challenge really is the, uh, for Azerbaijan's threat perception is armenia azerbaijan nagorno karabakh conflict. Because if you look at it for Azerbaijani current uh, situation with regard to the conflict, 20% territories of Azerbaijan have been occupied. 
and also it's a humanitarian challenge and uh, difficulty for Azerbaijan but we have 1 million refugees and IDPs imagine that in the world we have 70 million refugees and IDPs 1 million out of which comes to the Azerbaijan's share and also uh, further uh, potentiality of further escalation of the conflict because along the Armenian-Azerbaijan line of contact, along the occupied territories of Azerbaijan, we have trench war scenario. A soldier sitting in the trench, and also, but unfortunately, we don't see optimist statements from Armenian leadership with regard to the resolution of the conflict. And we would like to, uh, you know, take out the threat from uh, the wider context of the South Caucasus to make the South Caucasus as a region of the peace, cooperation and prosperity as we are doing with some other neighbors of Azerbaijan. But for that, we need to be obliged by the norms and principles of international law and charter of the United Nations. We cannot return back to the 30s and 40s of the last century when one country, by sheer use of force in Europe, occupied territories of other countries. It's a way to nowhere. And we should respect one another, including territorial integrity of one another, and based on that to build our cooperation. It's a message to Armenia that for the resolution of the conflict, as demanded by UN Security Council resolutions, Armenia should withdraw its troops from occupied territories, and IDPs and refugees should back to their homes, and based on that, we can uh, you know, avoid this security threat or military security threat. But of course, South Caucasus is geographically important as well. Along with the traditional uh, security matters, we also have new uh, threats and challenges. Elements of radicalism and extremism, and also geographically, South Caucasus is very close to new hotbeds of the conflicts in the wider Middle East region. These are all issues can potentially affect uh, security uh, in the region of the South Caucasus as well. But uh, we are working with our partner uh, countries on that issue as well. As uh, for the future diplomats, my friendly uh, you know, recommendation would be for them to believe in rule of law, in international affairs. And the rule of law, it's not only a matter within the states, it should also be a matter within the states and among the states as well. Unfortunately, we see diminishing application of the rule of law based approach in international affairs. And challenges and risks are increasing. And also, we also see that international institutions and their practicality and functionality are somehow decreasing. And therefore, along with the rule of law, believing in multilateralism. There is no single solution of the global challenges and difficulties. And also, my uh, friendly advice to my uh, future colleagues of the diplomats would be, uh, before uh, when we started in the diplomacy, our major focus was on humanitarian sciences theory of international relations, history of international relations, legal aspects, but now agenda of the diplomacy is growing. Now artificial intelligence is coming to the fore of the diplomacy as well. Tomorrow, as a country, we should think about it as well, making the common convention, or pollution of the space. I can share my own experience. Uh, when I was in a foreign uh, ministry spokesperson of Azerbaijan foreign ministry, I was in my position as demanded I should make a statement about the nuclear power plant in neighboring country. So but to make a statement about the nuclear power plant is a potential risks to our region, I was obliged to study a little bit nuclear physics. Imagine diplomats studying the nuclear physics. That's in the future, but we should accept it and therefore we should have future diplomats and including the current ones should have much broader approach to the international issues and other disciplines as well.